And to other national issues. Now, the issue of street children has become one of the most widely discussed social tragedies, but still a cankerworm that refuses to die. People are witnessing a deluge of talks about the plight of these children from newspaper articles to radio talk shows, television documentaries, and elegant academic discussions. There are also countless NGOs supposedly working for the interests of street children. Well attended workshops and conferences have been convened on the subject matter as well. Even government claims to be doing its very best to address the problem. Yet, in spite of all these well publicized efforts, the problem seems to be growing bigger by the day. Now, with me in the studio, it's Ronke Onikpe Day, founder One Child, One Care Initiative, to discuss this issue. Good to have you, Ronke. Good evening. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. Great. Thank you. Uh, now, we just talked about um, the is issue of street children, and we know that you have an initiative and you are somehow engaged in this. Now, the first question would be why do we have so many abandoned children in mm. Nigeria? <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's a very deep question. Uh, we do because, um, like, um, um, a lot of um, people live under the, the the income that they could take care of a family. Let's even say a standard, maybe one child or two kids and a father and a mother. And feeding is very, very difficult for them. So along the line, there could be anything that could happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe death, death of a father or death of a mother. And the children, some have six, some have seven, and the children are sh shared, you know, within family members. These are the same family that they are living below income, now sharing to their own family members that are also living below income. Mm. So maybe the person that was managing to struggle with four children loses his wife, his sister, or his brother, and these kids are now shared between them, and he has to take them up. Of course, he can't cope, definitely. Sure. And um, sometimes they now say, okay, we'll see how we can help you. They hawk on the street. Some of them have to run away from the homes and street on, sleep on the streets. And of course, again, they are teenage pregnancy. They're teenagers mm. that get themselves pregnant. They get pregnant and, you know, nobody wants to. The parents don't even understand how it happened. And these girls are threatened and sent away from the homes. Some of them will have these babies and find out that they can't cope. Sure. They will just abandon the baby and run away with the child, leaving the baby maybe with a grandma or a grandpa, and of course, another abandoned baby on the street. So, so many, you know, so many reasons why these babies keep increasing and toddlers, you know, young teenagers, and it's alarming. The rate is really, really alarming, and it's getting terrible. What can be done to reduce it? You know, what can be government interventions or even private sector? For the government has a whole lot, a whole lot to do, a whole lot. Um, they, you know, even beyond the normal kids, there are also special need children, uh -huh. you know, special need children, and some are really, really challenging for some of these mothers, and some can't even bring them out to show you that this is my child. Mm. So imagine that, so when they see, they, they will see someone to help them take care of the child. They will promise you will come, they won't come back. And these same kids, I, I, overseas, I know in some, um, some Western world, even compensate parents, they give, you know, some uh, money monthly oh, welfare, care. welfare care, you know, for these children. Then a whole lot. Education is not free. Sure. Education must be free. Education is not free, it's expensive. So basic needs are there, you know, so there are some things that the government needs to put. They should be basics. We don't even have our basics. Mm. So this is where the government comes into. You know, NGOs can try their best, but NGOs can't be do the founder. You can't do it all. They're not the foundation. It's just like a father and a mother. Who pays your school fees? You know? So even if your siblings want to assist mom and dad, they can't be the one to do the sole the provision, bulk the bulk of it. So that's where the government comes into place. Try and get policies. There are some states that are doing right now and we are really grateful for them and we pick we pray they keep doing it. You know, make education free, let these low income families be able to meet their basic needs and the other things they can think about, maybe now clothing, you know, and all that. So when education, when feeding, you know, if a child goes to school and is free and there's lunch in between, of course the parents will be a little relaxed. So that's where government comes into place. And for private, you know, um, a lot of stories, um, trust issues with orphanages, sure. lot of trust issues with NGOs doesn't mean that some are not doing the right thing. We are doing the right thing at One Child, One Care, and we can open our books to anybody. You can ask transparency is now our number one keyword. People that are close to us, our partners, our NGO members, we believe, we thrive even on integrity. So private in, um, institutions shouldn't do the network thing of, I know this person, I know. No, it's beyond that. Do you know this person to deliver? Mm. 
So if you trust this NGO to deliver, check their books, check their records, then come and be a partner to what they do. So a lot of private institutions can partner with these NGOs and deliver more. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a way of you giving back to societies your CSR program. Do those do the CSR program for visibility. Do the CSR program because you want to make an impact. Mm -hmm. You want to change a child's life. You want to change the community. You know, there are some private um, institutions that are doing this and we applaud them, but we need more. Okay, so let's talk about adoption now, Ronke. Uh, why is there still so much secrecy and shame, you know, attached to adopting children in our society? Everything is secrecy in Africa. Everything is secrecy. We just believe there's always a power behind every, every good thing that comes to us and we just feel that, okay, I need to, you know, to me, adoption is a beautiful thing. Even if, even if you have kids, you know, that's different with of adoption. You know, there's a beautiful thing. He said that you want to be responsible for another life. That's an adoption. You want you deliberately want to say, okay, I can make this life better with my own, with what I have. I have a, I have an extra blessing, mm. you know, to pass to another child. So, but people want to be like, is my own child? Everything is not by blood. Some of these ad, uh, adopted children, I was just sharing with a friend that over time, when they stay with you two, two to three years, they will start looking like their foster parents. Mm. That tells you that it's not just always by blood. Many times we are, we should be open to new ways of making life better for ourselves. That's the reason God has given us brain to think. It should, there should be ways that we can make life better than our friends. It doesn't have to be the, always the normal way, mm. you know. And adoption is even the normal way. Because you can't have a sibling of yours or a friend of yours out of the picture and his child is hanging on the street and you say because you are still trusting for God for your own child. Mm -hmm. Then like it is a Yoruba private, I like saying this all the time, that there's a Yoruba private that Ori Omolumpe Omowai, meaning that is a is the head of a child that brings another child. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking for it's something that you are, you 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 attract that comes to you. If you attract the goodwill of a child, then take a child closer. It shouldn't be anything we should be ashamed of. For those that have done abduction, I say, well done. You had, you are the winners, you are the champions. And for you thinking about it, think about it, be deep thought about it. If you truly want children, mm -hmm. if you do want a child, you know, you should be, you should, you should not wait that it has to be from your body. Mm. It could be from any source. But as long as, because one thing I realize over children is that the person they are so used to over time, you become the father, you become the mother. Over time, you become their role mother. Mm. You don't have to birth me from the womb to be my role mother. The fact that you give me life, they are mothers and they are mothers. Mm. You know, I can be a mom and I can be a mom. Being a mom is a continuous thing. It's a thing of the heart. And that's where we should all come to. We shouldn't come to the fact that I don't have a child for 20 years and there's nobody you are responsible to. There's there's no child that is looking up to you and said, um, somebody is coming to check on me. You can't, you can't even adopt why the baby is not yet in your, in your house. It can be a guidance to that child. Mm, thank you so very much, uh, you. Ron Care, for your thank time you. there. And thank we you. just hope that you get all the support and uh, that you need for thank the good you. work you're thank doing. You.